When you hear the word Arboretum and you think just trees, think again. I'm WEIU's Lacey Spence and today we're at the University of Illinois Arboretum. We'll share why you and your family should take a hike coming up. Take a hike on WEIU is supported by Roll King, America's farm and home store, camping supplies, kayaks, fishing and pet supplies, and more. Find your store and more information regarding Roll King at RollKing.com. Hi, I'm WEIU's Lacey Spence. I've lived in Central Illinois my whole life, and if there's one thing I've learned, you don't have to go too far to find the beauty of the great outdoors. Come along with me as I visit a variety of parks and natural areas across Illinois, and share why you should take a hike to each episode's location. Adventure and fun await in Take a Hike, the mini-series. Thank you for joining us for this episode of Take a Hike. I'm your host, Lacey Spence, and today we are on the road at the U of I Arboretum. I've got two fabulous guests here today, and I will go ahead and let you introduce yourselves and your title here. We'll start with you, Diane. I'm Diane Anderson, and I'm the horticulturist and, I guess, grounds manager here at the Arboretum. Perfect. And you? Yeah, my name's Kevin McSweeney. Um, I'm the director of the Arboretum, and I'm also a soil scientist. Wonderful. So we've got two fabulous people here ready to uh, pick your brains, hopefully. And uh, first off, can you talk a little bit about uh, how the Arboretum came to be, either one of you? Well, my understanding is that uh, the idea of having a, an Arboretum at the University of Illinois has been in the works for many, many years. And um, about, what, 25 years ago? Mm -hmm. um, um, Miles Hartley gave a donation to the university for the purposes of beautifying the campus. And the president at the time, Mort Weir, decided it would probably be easier to concentrate this effort in one location. And hence we um, had the start of the Arboretum, which is represented by the sunken garden, which is known as the Miles C. Hartley Selections Garden. And that really started the, um, the, the first major effort to establish the Arboretum. And it has grown since then with the addition of various other gardens. And then further to the south, we have the um, Southern Arboretum Woodlands, which is a, more of a, what I would call a natural area where we uh, are now developing it for teaching, outreach, and research efforts. So we've got a variety of, um, a huge variety of, of different landscape elements that compose the Arboretum. And so it's more than trees. It's more than trees. I feel trees. like a lot of people hear Arboretum, myself included, guilty. Mm. I just think Arbor, tree, and that's it. Mm. You were saying, um, telling me off camera, 60 acres of land here? We have 60 acres about in the north part and then the the saw, Southern Arboretum Woodlands is what you were just talking about. Yeah, is another 22. And it's joins, it joins a prairie restoration area and the Pollinitarium, which is um, an, a museum for pollinators. So we have some very interesting things on the, camp, on the grounds. Wonderful. And so you had run through some of the gardens. Um, did you want to talk a little bit about the variety of plant life here, either one of you? Yeah, the Hartley started out, it's called Selections, but it started out, it was a huge annuals trial garden. We've had trials on campus for decades, and um, because we had breeding programs here in horticulture, now the Hartley is going to be transitioned primarily. We still have some annual trials, perennial trials, but also some native shrubs and perennials and cultivars of those is what we're concentrating on in the selections garden now. May I interrupt really yeah. quick? If you're not f someone who's familiar with gardening and things, what is, what is a trial? It's, it's, 
it's really an evaluation, but what we do is we have standards, plants that are available, you know, the best petunia, for example, or two or three, will be side by side um, trialing with a new development. And then you look at things like the color, the habit, disease resistance, that sort of thing. And in the case of the, the native ours that we would like to trial or evaluate or display here, what we'd really be looking at is what kind of pollination we have, maybe compared to the straight species and things like that. Okay. So it, it, they're all kind of different, depending on what you're looking for in the plant. So as you were going through the gardens, I'm sorry to interrupt. No, that's So fine. you have the garden where you're doing a lot of the trial work. Right. That's the Hartley. And then we have a new garden, a uh, newish garden in 2017, I think the, why don't you talk about that, yeah, Kevin? Yeah, just to the north of the Hartley, we have the sesquicentennial garden. Like a number of our gardens, it, it has relied on the, the goodwill and support from donors. And in this case, Joellen Downey and her family provided the support for that garden. And it's a very distinctive design um, it's shaped as an ellipse Ooh. and has um, a set of interior pathways that are not geometric and so it's a kind of a, a catchy design and again uh, the the majority of the plant material is perennial so we have a variety of seasonal color that um, I think is important uh, in the old days the Hartley Garden it was just annual plants so we had three months of bliss and then nothing. nothing. <laughs> so we're, tr we're trying to, you know, provide a palette of plant materials around the Arboretum that, that, that give us a seasonal variation in color, form, shape, etc. So the sesquicentennial um, is, 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 uh, is a really nice jewel that we've added. It's called the sesquicentennial mm. because we dedicated it after 150 years after the university started. Oh, wonderful. So it's a bit of a mouthful. And, uh, <laughs> we the S Garden. It, we call it the 150. The 150. Year. I gotcha. Yeah. We also have Dwarf Conifer Garden right here. Okay. Um, we have Magnolia Collection. We have a Yellow Collection. And we have other Magnolias here. Yes, and, and where are we sitting today? We've got a beautiful uh, canvas underneath our feet. Ah, this this is the council ring, um, and as you can see, it's um, rounded in shape. But again, this is an ellipse. We we're kind of fixated on ellipses as a as a geometric form, um, and as you will see, maybe in a long shot, we can see from where we're sitting right up to the president's house. And this is on one of the major north-south axes of the campus broad canvas architectural design. So if you were to go to the Illini Union and look down north and south, you'd also be on one of these major axes. So the council ring, again, uh, thanks to a donor, um, Jane and John Santa Grossi and their families, we was added to complement the Arle, which the family had also supported. And we're in the middle of the Arle right now of linden trees. Um, and it was uh, conceived in discussions as a way to sort of add a little bit more um, uh, finish to the Arle as a gathering space. And if we look at uh, back in history, it's been fairly common among a variety of different groups to gather in the round. The idea being there's no one at the head of the table. Yeah. Right? So, you know, you've got Viking traditions, Native American traditions, King Arthur and the Knights of the Round Table. You can go on. But I, I love the idea of having a, a gathering space like this. And it's proved to be very popular among our visitors. We've had a wedding here. We're extending this um, feature with a new pathway, which you'll see later, that winds beautifully towards the parking lot. And we'll have stonework similar to this embedded within this new addition that, that links the pathway to the Arle. 
Um, May I stop you there? Mm -hmm. Let's talk visitor opportunities. Um, you had mentioned a wedding. Um, as we're sitting here, we see some folks mm -hmm. walking by. Yeah. Uh, what, what is there for folks to get involved with here? Is it simply taking in the views? Well, I think, I think first and foremost, in my mind, the beauty of this Arboretum is it's open to all, mm -hmm. campus, community, and beyond. We have no fences, we have no admission fee. It's a place where I, I, th that I think is important where a lot of people can come and really do their own thing. Yeah. You know, if they want to come and have a picnic, have a gathering, play frisbee. So I think the informal aspect is really, really important. Beyond that, we do have opportunities for people to have weddings, as we've discussed. We have a very active cross-country program. So the um, Division of Intercollegiate Athletics holds events here. Um, high schools hold events here. Running clubs, charity groups. Pre-pandemic, we had big events um, on the ground um, in association with Japan House. Yeah. Um, they put on a big, have put on a big festival. And we're expecting, um, as things now become more hopefully normal in terms of activities that yes. we will be seeing. We've had been having some discussions with colleagues in the Department of Music about some music festivals. Oh, they'd be lovely out here. Uh, and most recently, we've had some very interesting discussions with colleagues in the School for Information Sciences about outdoor gaming. Oh. about which I know relatively little, but apparently it's an emerging field where <laughs> people design activities, scavenger hunts, yeah. and, and, very, uh, and various other sort of ways of enjoying nature, but, but having a sort of a curiosity and a purpose and a, and a game associated with it. So we're very interested and excited to see how that partnership will evolve. Yeah. And we, you know. Oh, Diane, what do you have to well, add? Well, I just wanted to say that we, I don't even, I, I can't remember if I told you this, but we had a scavenger hunt here mm. that our interns this summer developed for uh, kids from first to fifth grade. And it was yeah. an informal, we, they did all the places and developed the handouts for kids and, mm. and they were able to come out here on their own and find stuff. Yeah, and so those are opportunities if folks are looking to connect and as we're taping this uh, late 2022, our folks will see it in 2023. If they're trying to find information, um, is there Facebook, website, what's the best way to find you all? I think our website. Yeah, the, web yeah. the website. Perfect. Well, thank you both for taking the time today. And we're going to take a quick break here on Take a Hike. And when we come back, we will talk with Professor Sato about Japan House. So don't go anywhere. And we are back. We have a different guest with us here. We've got Professor Shozo Sato. Welcome to Take a Hike. Thank you so much for inviting me. Of course, it's our pleasure. Now today, we are pivoting to talk about the Japan House here at the U of I Arboretum. So if you could, um, you were instrumental in getting this started, correct? Yes. So for the love of sharing your culture, yes. you started this out of your home. Yes. And the students would come to you right. to the point you were sleeping in your basement. Yes. That's dedication. Yes. And so you were able to then move into this beautiful location yes. and fully um, 
pay homage to your culture by being able to uh, have this lovely garden and outdoor space. Is that exactly that's it? Exactly. Okay, that is quite the story. Now I know your family as well. Um, they have been instrumental in. Um, is it an expansion of yes. this property? Can yes. you talk about that a little oh, bit? Oh yes, <clears throat> Japan House was originally created by the people's support donation yeah and then that was a limited amount but it was function enough for what we needed at that time but classrooms there is no classroom traditional mm -hmm. japanese rooms and a little hallway and another traditional tea room so that all traditional tea rooms but no classroom so we start saying we need a classroom but the university is not going to give us funds for creating classroom mm -hmm. so we have to donate some fund so uh, myself the one million and my wife donated one million and her elder brother donated one million so with three million dollars we hope to build that addition go Ogura Sato Annex. That's incredible to have such a family connection. Yes. Uh, can you talk a little bit about some of the garden space and some of the significance around them at Japan House? Yes. The, when you were in Japan House, on the west side is more of a naturalistic uh, garden called Roji, which is on the way to tea room. You are supposed to go through beautifully manicured, but natural looks of the nature. And then you purified your soul, and then go into tea room. So that is in the west side. And the east side is dry garden. And this is a very traditional Zen based, Zen philosophy based uh, garden, which is white pebbles to be ocean or crowd, and then occasionally standing rocks to be the summit of the mountain or island. So, depending on how you see it, the, the meaning becomes different. So, that kind of Zen philosophical open-minded garden. So that is a very interesting for American people. And then we have this beautiful pond and this was made while in Japan house was in construction, before construction. So how we would like to have this land set up? So Jim Byer, he drew lines this is the shape of the lake we want and with the soil we want to have a mound so creating more of a japanese concept of landscaping rather than plain cornfield extension sure well and we were talking prior to the interview that you also had a hand in um, the intricate details of the walkway can you tell us how you created some of the oh, yes. design oh uh, with our rhythm department, uh, we walk the extension of Japan Health Garden. Yeah. And then we have all the paths were cemented. And in Japan, in a garden, walkway are beautifully designed with very choice stone. Different shape, different color, uh, and different sizes. So we often call frozen music on the ground mm -hmm. so when you walk on you pay attention to where you each step take place and in that your mind also purified through art of the landscape and so when we have this cemented past it's just white uninteresting cement walkway. So I want to add that feeling yeah. of Japanese traditional garden of walking and 
you can see the steps and the designs that give them uh, another pleasure of walking. You thought through every single detail. <laughs> yes. So within Japan House, you had mentioned the ceremonial teas. Yes. Uh, from my understanding, there's also uh, the teaching of calligraphy. Yes. Can you talk about that at all? Yes. Uh, such as this writing. It's our lovely. Uh, Chinese ideogram. And then it's, it's a Chinese ideogram, but Chinese, Korea, and Japan, we all share the same ideogram. Okay. And then these have a wonderful writing useful brushes. It's very different from ballpoint pen. Yes. And so, <laughs> Just a little. So, so they have to learn how to use brushes and that's a new challenge. And then we have a chairperson of a graphic design department in College of Fine Applied Art. And she taking these classes seriously because she feel the line and the active spaces inside is the foundation of a graphic design. And so she promote to her classes how important this can be. And, and also we always write not only house and the garden, but uh, Zen philosophy. One letter to six, seven letters, but at the beginning, letter one, and then two letters and such. And then while they're writing, they try to understand the meaning of that statement, which is Zen statement. So while they're writing, trying to learn how to use a brush, but at the same time, they have to learn about the Zen way of mind. So this is very popular for visually and in mentally. Well, I tell you what, I have felt very calmed just speaking with you. Well, thank you. Slowed me down from my, my rushing regular. Uh, a final question I have for you. What is it like for you to have this impact to be able to share your culture with so many and for for generations to come. Yes, I'm very happy that the university accepted us because when I came to this campus 1967 when I walk campus there was no Asian person at yeah. that time. I was only one. Wow. I said to myself, how I can introduce Asian culture? And then using, since I'm Japanese, Japanese culture as an as example of Asian culture. And then that's how we started Japanese traditional culture workshop in the School of Art and Design. And that's the beginning. And then we taught blacking painting and flower arrangement, three-dimensional and two-dimensional, and then philosophy through tea ceremony. And so these are the foundation of University of Illinois Japan House uh, cultural activities. And if I may add, Japan House in the university system, the only one in this U University of Illinois. No other university in the United States. So this is the only one. So I'm very proud of having Japan House. Most definitely. What feedback, can you, can you share an instance of feedback you had gotten from students who didn't realize this was here, but then uh, took advantage of it and loved it? Yes. So they keep coming back, <laughs> yeah. homecoming, and they enjoy being back to Japan house. And then they learn not only Japanese culture, but the manner. Yes. And how to kind to other people and the graciousness and all that they learn. So it's a wonderful education system for all the way around.
Now I need to ask Professor Shozo about one more special feature of this location. Can you talk about this building behind us? Yes. In the most of the Japanese garden have a azumaya. That means where you can have a shade under the roof and then you can sit and enjoy the beautiful garden. And so we like to have a garden uh oh little hot like. And then this Azumaya we call Azumaya in Japanese. And my former student in a Kabuki class, Nick Offerman, and he become very, very popular, famous, and and he is very kind and a talented person. So he said, I'll make you Azumaya. And he built it all this in Los Angeles in his studio. And then he shipped everything with us, with his staff. And then he flew in and he actually climbed up on the roof and put all the single by his own hand. It's a wonderful gift. And so we have a statement in the inside. Can you see this? Let's take a step inside. Pardon me. <laughs> Go ahead. Can you? That's called teacher and the student who walk the same passage. And is that something that you had imparted within? Yes. Like to Nick? Yes, yeah, to Nick. And then this is the uh, Azumaya with teacher and student walking the same path. And so he liked it. And then there is another statement and think gift, all that. Wonderful. Well, thank you for sharing such a, a personal story. Yes. And getting to see some of your teaching go out into the world and then come back. Yes. <laughs> wonderful. Wonderful to have uh, this brilliant the students, so many of them in your life. All right, well, thank you again, Professor Shozo, for taking the time. And uh, we appreciate our viewers for watching Take a Hike. We hope you'll join us for our next episode. Thank you. Take a Hike on WEIU is supported by Roll King, America's farm and home store, camping supplies, kayaks, fishing and pet supplies, and more. Find your store and more information regarding Roll King at RollKing.com.